Welcome back to the Sports Beat. I am Dexter Henry, and today I'm joined by a special guest, Brandon Robinson, the great writer, sports entertainment personality, has joined us here to talk a little bit about a couple of topics. And today we're going to start off with an article that he wrote, elmvibe.com, about Isaiah Thomas, in which you had a different take on it there. And Brandon, I want to welcome you to the show, and thanks for uh, stopping by to talk with us. How's everything going on with you? Man, I can't call it. Glad to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Definitely glad to have you. Let's get into it. Last week, Isaiah Thomas, news comes out that the Liberty have decided to hire him. And this was a controversial hire. Everybody around the league and everybody in the sports world is talking about this. This is a guy who had a sexual harassment suit when he was with the Knicks. You wrote a different side of the story to it and talked about how it could be a positive of him to come back in New York. Why that side? couple things. Um, obviously, uh, being with the Knicks from 2004-2008 as, as a general manager as well as a coach, um, a material guy, I think, had a 112 and 216 record or 265 record uh, during those four years. Uh, but one thing that Isaiah Thomas has always had was an eye for talent. He uh, was able to draft Tracy McGrady, David Stoudemire, Marcus Camby, Trevor Ariza, David Lee, and the list goes on and on. He has an eye for talent, um, but I think that removed from the game in the front office role and doing some NBA TV he never really stopped working and I think that if you're able to play to his strengths I think he has a chance to do something special you have a, a New York Liberty team under Bill Lambeer um, who struggled the last couple years hasn't made the playoffs while Bill Lambeer has been head coach and it's a fresh start in New York City the scene of the crime quote unquote happened in New York City you have a chance to kind of repair your image in a sense and I think Isaiah Thomas made a smart decision and got some managerial roles as far as you know being a, a part owner of the team as well. I thought Brandon the lead in his article was homeboy knows how to keep a job. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas has had some trouble here. How has he kept a job? Ex explain that to us. How has he kept a job? Well, first of all, it was a lead to my story. Uh, growing yeah. up, my mom used to say, homeboy is getting paid. <laughs> so, you know, so the fact that he was able to, to hit a storyline and was relevant again, uh, that was the thing that led me in and, and made people like yourself and other distinguished people keep reading. Yes, he has had trouble maintaining a job, but at the same time, I think that the reason why he's hired was the fact that he obviously can eye talent and the fact that he's done that, his track record in the draft has, has said so, as I mentioned before, Nate Robinson, Trevor Ariza, Tracy McGrady, David Lee, uh, you know, Marcus Camby has had multiple uh, defensive player of the year awards, Nate Robinson's slam dunk contest uh, winner, Tracy McGrady, a scoring champion as a member of the Orlando Magic. Uh, so he's had opportunities, and let's not forget, when he was the general manager of the Toronto Raptors, yeah. uh, the way that you saw the Miami Heat play small ball when they won two championships, that was actually something that um, the Toronto Raptors implemented uh, almost a decade ago where you traded to get Doug Christie mm -hmm. and you had Charles Oakley and then you had Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady and some of those other characters uh, playing small ball. And I think that you, you saw that Coach Eric Spolster utilize a similar offensive scheme when he was with the Miami Heat. So I do think there is some brilliance to Isaiah Thomas and I think it's on his onus uh, to really capitalize off of the, the position that he's in now and help the New York Liberty expand to the next level. The East is wide open for the Liberty. Right. And they have the chance, you know, with, with people like Swin Cash and some other pieces on that team to, to make the playoffs. I did predict that in my, in my piece that they would make the playoffs. That's as far as I'm going right now. Now, we spoke about this off camera, and for the audience knows, Brandon brought a positive side to Isaiah Thomas. A lot of the publicity around Isaiah has been negative. So now that you, you wrote this piece and it's out there, we talked about this, and you know there's been some negative backlash to you for writing this. What has that been like, and what's been the reaction of the public like to you with what you wrote? <laughs> the story came out over the weekend, and uh, it was on Mother's Day, and I uh, was set my alarm clock getting ready to go to church, and uh, a certain gentleman has been harassing me the last day and a half, and he doesn't agree. He brings up, you know, the, the draft picks that the that the New York Knicks actually gave up to get Stephon Marbury, and those mm -hmm. picks later, uh, Portland was able to pick up Lamarcus Aldridge for one. So I wholeheartedly focused on not making excuses for Isaiah Thomas's past, you know, but at the same time looking at the things that he has done. And um, you know, there've been people on Twitter who who who've definitely um, not agreed with me. But hey, they talked about Jesus Christ. I'm not him. It, it, at the end of the day, nobody's going to agree with everything that you say. And you know, that's that's the luxury that I have in writing an op-ed piece for one. And for two, the season starts in June, so Isaiah's got time to kind of put his game face together and collaborate with the Liberty organization. We're going to get into how exactly he impacts the Liberty organization. We're going to talk about that a little bit down the road. But if you look back, he had this the sexual harassment suit with Anuka Brown Sanders, and that came out. And now he has another job. Homeboy's got another job, <laughs> and he's 
running a women's basketball team. Do you see the problem with that that some others may see? I spoke to Isaiah Thomas uh, over the course of the weekend, and I said to him, you know, the issues that I wrote, you know, I definitely looked at, you know, his, his coaching record. I looked at uh, his drafting record, and I said people do have a right to um, criticize y your record. You know, your record speaks to itself. And if it was in any, any other organization, if it was in any other city, mm. I think it wouldn't have been made such a big deal. New York is the number one media market in the world, and he's re revisiting something that happened seven or eight years ago. But I think from a marketing perspective, to work with a women's organization, that's genius. You, you, you get to repair your image by winning, because winning cures all. And at the same time, you can display that you do accurately have an eye for talent. You can display that you can segment pieces together and that you can get people to win. Because, And not to mention, the storyline is you rejoin Bill Lambeer, a guy that you won two championships with in 89 and 90. Not only that, Swin Cash won a, a couple WMA championships with Bill Lambeer. So you got the whole crew together, mm -hmm. you get this big Disney storyline, and it sells. I don't see Isaiah Thomas in a long haul staying with the Liberty. I do think that that's a way for him to kind of reestablish his, uh, his ability to work in a front office role. Now you said that, you know, this is what better way to resell the image, work with a women's basketball team that works. You look at the Liberty, their fan base, a lot of families, obviously women, huge presence in the LGBT community. The big question here from a marketing standpoint is, will those fans be turned off? At first, yeah. Think so. Who wouldn't? You, you, you've been in a situation where you've been implicated in a scandal. Yes, right. you, you're going to um, you're going to tick off some people. But it kind of reminds me of the movie Any Given Sunday. Willie Beeman, they weren't feeling him at first. Mm -hmm. At the end, he played his way to a new contract and he rode off into the sunset. I'm not going that far yet. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is, when there's anything new, people are going to always question the durability or the ability for the person who's been hired to do the job to make things happen. Now, how much can it affect? Does it affect the dollars at the Garden? Because the bottom line, beside winning, is turning a profit. And MSG wants to turn a profit. They want fans to come in. They want to see that. Do you think that affects sales, ticket sales, jersey sales? How deep could that effect go? Fans are saying, hey, we, we don't like Isaiah Thomas being associated with the Liberty. I don't think so. You don't, you don't see it? I don't. I don't think so because, again, assuming that they win and assuming that they do what they're supposed to do, winning cures all. I, I, I think that uh, green is the universal language, but I think winning is the, is the key to the admission that allows people to want us to reach into their pockets, their purses, their Louis Vuitton bags, and make it happen. So I do think that Isaiah Thomas, and he's not the coach. He's not right. playing on the floor. He's behind the scenes. And I think that New York sells itself. The other thing that people are going to look at and people are going to be concerned about, Nick fans are always concerned, and Nick fans, you know this, you're concerned about Isaiah meddling with the team. You spoke to him. Does he have any interest in meddling with the Knicks organization? Or is this strictly dealing with the Liberty? Uh, we didn't specifically talk about that issue, but I, I, I've spoken to other people who have said no. Um, I think that's the attractive thing to do. Obviously, uh, he and Dolan's relationship goes way back, like way back, like I guess they played in the sandbox together at some point, but <laughs> it's, it, it seems that, you know, that, that question with uh, the, the Dolans and, and Isaiah continually comes up. You know, obviously, uh, there's, it's been said that Carmelo Anthony did the move that got him to, to the New York Knicks a couple years ago. You know, Isaiah Thomas, he and Spike Lee were a vocal point in, in, in selling uh, Carmelo Anthony to the Knicks, but they have a team president in, in Phil Jackson, and they've got their own issues. The Knicks ha obviously had the second worst record in, in the NBA this season behind the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, I don't see it happening, but, but you never know what questions somebody has. You never know what a text message says. You never know what a phone call or a FaceTime message, you know, how that goes. But at face value, I don't think he'll have significant input. So to wrap things up, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth. And for those who haven't been able to read Scoop's articles on Vibe.com, you can definitely check it out there. Very good read. You think this is a positive for the Liberty? You think this is a positive for Isaiah Thomas? You think this is a positive for New York City? If is that your opinion? I think it's a positive for Isaiah Thomas. I think going into it, I think the Liberty are going to be criticized. But take us take a look at it from this perspective. The, the, the New York Liberty are one of the original WNBA teams. Uh, they battled during the Teresa Weatherspoon and the Rebecca Lobo era. Um, they never were able to seal the deal, winning the WNBA championship. Suppose you do have a person who maybe not be favored right now go in and get the talent that you need to go in and get you the players and, and help you execute in getting those players on the floor. At the end of the day, it goes to coaching, but you need an architect uh, to put those pieces together. 
Would you really turn down the opportunity to win based upon just perception? I do think that at the end of the day, if they win, I don't think that people will always necessarily remember the past. That happened seven or eight years ago. I'm not making excuses for right. it, but I'm focusing solely on the winning aspect. What did uh, the former owner of the Oakland Raiders say? Just win, baby? Just win. And I think that that's what he'll be able to do. So winning cures all. We will see what happens with Isaiah Thomas and the Liberty and if there will be any effect of hiring Isaiah Thomas, who is back in New York City. You can follow Brandon Robinson on Twitter at Scoop B. Check out his articles on Vibe. Wrote about this, many other great topics. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can hit me up at Deck Sports Beat. If you want to comment more on the show, tell me what you thought about the discussion I had with Brandon. Chat more about Isaiah Thomas or anything you want to chat about in the world of sports and business. That's a wrap for this edition of the Sports Beat on BEN, where jobs come first. I'm Dexter Henry.